Welcome back to Sip the Tyler Films. I'm your host, Coach Evans. And today we're going to continue on our look at the Todd Munkin and how his past can help the present 2023 Ravens become elite. What we're going to focus on today is the bunch formation. And when looking at these clips, I want you to take away two things and kind of notice two things. Look at the variety of plays from the same formation or a formation that's similar and look at the spacing created from a condensed set. Cause we all know bunch is a condensed set, whether it be, whether you have a tight end on the opposite side or a split out receiver. But for the most part, the three receivers together are bunch bunched up. So watch the spacing that's created from a condensed set and look at the variety of plays that come from this set. And that's where we're going to go. Roll the intro. So before we get started, let's take care of our housekeeping things. If you like the video, then like the video. Subscribe. And hit the bell so you can be notified when these videos drop throughout the rest of the 2023 offseason. Again, it's summertime. OTAs just first session of OTAs just happened. I uh, got another session coming in a couple weeks. Uh, the mandatory mini camp. And then we're going to flow right into camp season. So uh, make sure you hit that bell so you can be notified for all the content I put out, especially this stuff with breaking down Todd Munkin's offense and how it will relate to our 2023 Baltimore Ravens. We have one of our fantasy football leagues filled up. If you want a chance to be in the second fantasy football league, you need to join the Patreon at, at patreon.com backslash sip the tally. Any tier will get you into that. If you're already a Patreon and you have not received your invite or you had an invite to the first league, which is now full, hit me up on Patreon. I'll send you the link to the second one and we can get this going so you guys can have a chance at taking the Cuban link from me, which I don't think is going to happen because I'm a fierce, fierce fantasy football competitor and I don't plan on losing either league. So if you want to do that, make sure you join the Patreon at patreon.com backslash sip the tally. And thank you for, for everybody that's already a Patreon and I appreciate your continued support. But let's get into it. All right, let's take a look at this first play. You see it starts in bunch and it puts a guy in motion. So you'll see that a lot. You're going to get the motion rail route from the guy in motion. You're going to get a curl right up under it. So you're really getting a curl flat concept toward the top with a uh, guy over the top. And then on the backside, you got a backside post from the actually a receiver and not a tight end in this case. What I really wanted you to notice is the spacing that's created out of this bunch set. And even though it ends up in two by two, it started in bunch. And look at that spacing. You pretty much got three guys to the top side of the field like a flood situation. But none of them are on top of each other. None of them are on top of each other, and the the routes, but not the routes, but the vision, the the reads are clear and concise. Like that, the this guy's covered up here. That's covered. This is covered. Oh, man, yeah, that's covered. And it and this is your open guy. So it's clear what's going on because of the spacing. Unlike you know in the past, everybody be jumbled up in the same spot. And you know recently I've come to find out that a lot of some of that was Mark freelancing. But still, a lot of guys ended up in the same spot last year. And, you know, there was a lot of option routes in the in the playbook that ended up making it look like Roman didn't know what he was doing, which, you know, maybe he did, maybe he didn't. But, you know, the space in here is obvious. Let's go to this next play. All right, here we got some innovation going. Again, you see your bunch set and you get bringing the guy in motion again. So you get kind of getting a similar look that you just got. You can get three verticals out of these guys. But keep your eye on that tight end, that H-back back there. This is a screen to the to the him. Everybody, everybody's flowing either with the these receivers going downfield with the back that came across. And now you got a lead blocker, which is this cat right here. Then the screen man, the guy getting the screen right there. And look at the spacing. Everybody that you see, that I see, is facing that direction. He's going there. But these linebackers that came over here, everybody's facing the opposite direction the play is going. And now you got tight end with one blocker, which is, is great because the play design is, is, is fabulous. And you got him in space. He got a playmaker in space, which is what all we can ask for from a coordinator. 
You got a playmaker in space. Now, this could be likely. This could be Mark. It could be Cola. But again, you got a playmaker in space, and you got about seven, eight yards out of it. Very innovative. Very, very, very innovative. And we got the personnel to, to do these things. And in some cases, better personnel. You look at the quarterback. I know it's pro in college, but quarterback play, way better. Uh, tight ends. Probably even it out to be equal because 19 is is an animal. And Darnell Washington is a great blocker. And I think Mark and and Likely are between both of them. Um, and receiver play, you're going to have better receiver play because they didn't have great receivers at Georgia. Now, this play right here, another innovative play. It's going to look like counter. You look like you're getting a, a guard H counter, a GH counter. That's what you look like you're getting. Then tight end just going to pivot. And work, uh, work his way to the flat. Look like counter. Even set up like counter. The, the footwork and everything by the quarterback and the running back. And now, look at that that surface level. You basically got a flood of flood to the right side off the boot. And you look at the you got four guys in the route, but look at the spacing. Look at the spacing. Nobody's on top of each other. Four guys same side of the field. Nobody's on top of each other. Spacing means everything. Spacing with good spacing. The throwing lanes are, but not necessarily the throwing lanes, your vision lanes to throw are open. Look at that. Because obviously one's open. Two's open if you make a great throw. Three's, three is open if all else fails. And then four is open because you got good spacing. So he on this throw, uh, Stetson Bennett could pick his poison because, because of the spacing and the play action. Now, he did now the, the play action, look at the footwork with, with Bennett. This is some great footwork, great fake with him in the running back. Shoulder ball, shoulder ball, shoulder ball. Hide it. Every look at the, look at the linebackers right here. Look look how the linebackers up in the lane like that. Even the safety. Everybody, even him, and he can see he can see the court. The running back don't have the ball. That that creates room for the, for this to come open. That creates room for Darnell Washington to kind of settle right here. Uh, he's he gonna, they gonna conflict this guy. They gonna conflict this guy right here, but still. Because of the, the good play action, the good footwork, the good 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 ball work by Stetson Bennett and play design, you can have all four guys open, in my opinion. You got all four of them open. If, in my eyes, all four of them open. And he throws the hardest throw. He throws it to the, the most covered guy, if if that's correct English. Because everybody else is buck naked. Again, let's hop to the next one. All right, when we mention Monk and we mention him also getting the backs involved in the passing game, which is something we think can be extremely healthy for for J.K., Gus, and whoever wins that third running back spot, whether it be Justice Hill or whoever. So watch this. You got the, the bunch set again. And all four, three of these guys are going different places to open up room for the back. Because they just all spread out. And look at the back just sit right there in the middle. This is the back right here. This is the back out the backfield. And just even with, I got the bigger, the bigger um, circle on it, but nobody's in this circle for the back. Not a soul. Not one soul. So his ability to create space out of condensed sets, because you see it, like it's, it's clear as day. You got, basically you got two guys open. You got th this guy coming across the, the middle on the, the, a little drag route open, and then they've created so much space for the back is wide open, which is who the, who's going to get the ball. Let me get these off your screen. See, the back gets it with plenty of space to work with. And uh, the defender makes a great tackle, but still, that's getting your back involved. And, look, and the spacing. And go back to here. Look at the spacing. That's beautiful spacing. That's like the quarterback can clearly see who's open, who's not open, and can kind of anticipate the roles and do what he needs to do because everybody's not right on top of each other. I just, just got to keep stressing spacing. Now, we just talked about them getting the back involved. Now, the back on this play is going to have a crucial role in deception and kind of conflicting the defender. So you got your bunch set again, and this is the route you're going to get. You're going to get the, the guy coming in motion, which you've already seen. He's going to go into the flats. 
you're gonna get a vertical by number two and you're gonna get a vertical by number three now, as i said that wrong you'll get a vertical by number one a vertical by number two number three is going in motion to the flats to the opposite side but you see the back and the reason i changed the color of his his arrows is because he's that route is going to conflict the corner because remember the very the last play we just saw the back came out and caught a ball right around the 30 yard line after the bunch set so watch how the back the back's route conflicts the corner and just creates a wide open buck naked easy as pie touchdown for the georgia bulldogs and that's the guy that's going to be conflicted right there so you'll see the safety at the top running with that post he's running with that post now you see look down at number one he looking in the backfield with a guy right in his face he's looking in the backfield at the running back come out there because the drive before or two drives before the back came out and caught a pass He's his eyes on the back and not not realizing that guy's running right past him with the safety leaving. Because if you pause it, I'm me pausing it right here. This guy realizes he messed up, so he's trying to get to the back. So he should have stayed deep, but he didn't. He got his eyes on his back, which allowed and the safety, the middle safety ran with the, the deep post. Look at the guy wide open. Because he hit the back a couple of times that put that cornerback in conflict. And ended up making them bust the coverage, and they got a easy, easy touchdown. Now in this play, you got the the bunch to the bottom, and you also got the extra receiver. So for those that don't know, in this set right here, you still got your seven men on the line of scrimmage. This dude is ineligible for a pass because he's covered up by this guy. So if they were to pass out out of this play, there are only four people that can go off a of passes out of this formation: one the back, two this guy, three this guy, four him. The tight end that's on the ball right here is ineligible. So just so you know that. So just kind of a giveaway that this is probably a, a run. Which it is. And I think it's duo. They're going to try to cave all that stuff in on the right side and let the, the running back bounce it out to a safety and make the safety tackle the running back. That's all they're trying to do. Trying to get double teams at the line of scrimmage, cave everything down, running back bounce, which is blocked up perfect. Running back gets this alley to run. He blocking him. So now it should be one-on-one -on -one with the running back and the safety. And you'll take that matchup. You'll take that matchup. Even though the safety came down here like a bat out of hell. He missed the tackle. But you'll take that matchup all day in the day. Now, again, we want to talk about spacing. Keeping with the concept of spacing and giving the quarterback clear reads. You, you get this same motion again. Again, you've seen this motion a couple of times with a bunch of different plays off of it. They either stay in bunch or they motion out like this. And if you, if you remember from my video a couple weeks ago about Mike McDaniels, and I, I called him McDonald's, McDonald's about three or four times in that video, this is the motion they use when they run that RPO with Tua. This is that motion. That starting bunch, that motion got over, and that RPO to that to that two-receiver side, that wide side. But that, so that's kind of in this family. But again, back to space. You see, you got you got a slant flat to the top, which he never really looked at. You got an out and a post on the bottom, and you got the little Nike, the little check route by the running back. But look at that spacing. Look at where everybody's at. Nobody's on top of each other. Clear throwing lanes for um, Stetson Bennett, you know, to make a read. He can come to four or five, potentially go to three if three crosses his face. But it's just everything's so clear. Nobody's on top of each other. You can see what the defense is, defense is. You can see what's going on. The spacing. And if this was a drinking game and y'all was, and we was talking about spacing, y'all be drunk right now. Because I just was, every time I watch these to, to kind of get an idea of what Munkin does, spacing stands out to me. Especially after going through what we've went through with, with Roman. The spacing from Munkin's concepts, and even though the, the, the running back dropped the ball on that, the spacing stands out. Really does. And that's, again, that was another attempt to get the running back involved in the passing game, which is what we've been asking for as fans. And again, starting with, with the mesh concept, they're going to motion down to, to, the, to the bunch. They're going to have a little mesh concept. But again, he gets he gets a nickel, the nickel uh, or the or one of the safeties, but I think it's a nickel. And it might be a safety that they brought in. He's going to be matched up on number 19. And I keep forgetting 19's name for Georgia, but he's probably their best receiver. And out of this mesh concept, they realized that he got one-on-one, -on -one, which I'm thinking 19 could be Mark. And you know we know how well Mark works in one-on-one -on -one situations. Mark can go get balls, especially versus smaller defenders. And that's what this is. 
You see the mesh drawn up right there. Typical mesh. Two shallows, a guy sitting over the ball. Then you can kind of do what you want with the other guy. And in this case, you get a slight fade out of it. And again, if this is Mark Andrews versus a nickel or a smaller safety, I'll take this all day, every day. Because we know Mark can go up and get stuff like that. We know it. We know it. He wasn't put in enough situations to have to do that. But we know Munkin can can create mismatches and then go to those mismatches when they get the matchup that they like. Again, giving you a variety of looks out of the same formation. That's your bunch set. It looks like toss. It's set up like toss. The old line blocking toss. You got reverse though. You got reverse. You got your H back coming around to take the first thing that show up. Then the next guy, you got to make a play. How to make a play. Great execution. Again, did you see the same play twice? This is nine plays out of bunch. Nine. Did you see the same play twice? I didn't. So variety and spacing is what I want you to take away from this video. And this is only the first of three that I'm going to do with this Georgia film. The second one, I got another formation I want to look at. And the third, I want to look at some runs. But again, variety and spacing, if you don't take away anything from this video, those are the, the, the key terms. So if you're still here, do hashtag variety, hashtag spacing in the comment section. And um, I appreciate you guys for coming through. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with me. And again, this is your first time here. Even if it's not your first time here, like the video. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. Hit that bell so you can be notified when we drop these videos throughout the rest of the 2023 offseason, pre-preseason, whatever you want to call it. But um, I thank you guys. Thank you all the Patreons. Thank you everybody for the likes and uh, appreciate you for the comments. The Daily Show will be back. Well, by the time you see this, the Daily Show will have been the ran for today. <laughs> so I appreciate you guys. Don't forget that show. Call in with your, your comments and your thoughts on whatever the topic is. And uh, I see you guys. So this, will, this is Tuesday night. So Daily Show Wednesday at 430. Make sure you get in there and check it out. Peace.